Hey everybody, welcome to our webinar on differentiating using digital portfolios. The digital portfolio we are going to be utilizing is the app Seesaw. Seesaw is an app you can use with Apple devices, Android, Chromebooks, on the computer, as well as on Kindle Fires. Just to introduce myself, my name is Samantha Patton. I am the instructional support teacher at Hanley Elementary in Garland ISD. That's in Texas. I am the webmaster here at Hanley as well as the I3. I am also a Seesaw ambassador. So if you'd like to learn more about Seesaw, feel free to contact me. You can contact me uh, on email at spatton at garlandisd.net or you can contact me on Twitter at, at Mrs. Patton too. My webinar moderator is Ms. Jocelyn Martinez. She is the pre-K teacher at Parsons Pre-K. She is also an I3, and you can contact her at jcmarty1 at garlandisd.net. Also, throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat bar on your YouTube Live, and she will be sure to relay those questions to me, and I will do my best to answer them. So for today's agenda and goals, we are going to do a Seesaw overview, take a look at my own Seesaw account. Then I'm gonna show you how to create your own activities on Seesaw. I'm going to share ideas with language arts, science, social studies, math, and then finally I'll end with any questions you have. So what is Seesaw? Teachers love Seesaw because it's a digital portfolio that collects all students' digital and physical work all in one place. Everything is nice and organized, which makes it really easy to assess um, as well as share information on how students are doing during parent-teacher conferences. Teachers love Seesaw because it's an area where they can create. Uh, within Seesaw, there are built-in tools that makes it really easy for students to capture their learning and to develop their new skills. Parents also love Seesaw because it's an awesome communication tool that you're able to seamlessly share what's going on in your classroom, which builds a strong school home community. So here's a quick wordle on Seesaw. The word that stands out the most is the word easy. It's so user friendly. Not only will you be able to pick up how to use it by just opening up the app, but Seesaw also has lots of tutorials and links that will help you along the way. Seesaw also offers PD in your PJs if you're ever um, looking for more ways to learn about the app. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what Seesaw looks like and also show you how to create activities, which is what I use to differentiate in my classroom. So once you log into Seesaw as a teacher, this is what it should look like. In the top left-hand corner, this is where you can access the different classrooms that you've created. As you can see, I've created several. Right now, I'm just using my sample class for this webinar. Then when I go back to my journal, on the left-hand side, if I scroll down, you can see all of the different uh, items students have published um, throughout the year. Now, this is just a sample, so there's not a whole lot of student examples on here, but it's a great visual. Um, you can see the student that published the product. You can see what they did. And then as a teacher, as a student, or as a parent, you can actually like each item, which is very similar to like Facebook or Instagram, which they love. And then you can also leave comments for students to see. This is also a great way to give students instant feedback. All right, so then if we look over on the right-hand side, this wrench is where you are able to adjust any of the settings for your class, whether or not you wanna add a teacher to collaborate with your class, if you wanna change your grade level, um, if you want to change the sign-in mode for your students, if you want to add or delete a student in your class, you can turn on and off what students can see. Um, you can allow new items to require approval or turn that off. 
You can also allow students to edit or not edit. So you do have a lot of control with Seesaw as a teacher. Then if I look down here, it shows all of the different students that are in this class. Again, this is just a sample class. I use this for different trainings. So most of them are numbers, but then I do have some names down here. At the very bottom, this is where you're able to access the student code, where students are able to log into their own Seesaw accounts. Students can access their Seesaw account by using a QR code. There is also a text class code if your device does not have a QR reader. And then you can also have students log in using their email address. Since I primarily teach elementary school, I feel that using the QR code is the easiest and quickest way for students to log in since they're still uh, learning their email addresses. All right, then to the right of the student code, this is where you can invite parents. So when you invite parents and parents log in and get an account, what happens is that they are able to see all of the student work that their child has published onto Seesaw. And each time their child publishes an item, they'll get a notification via email or via their notification center on their phone or uh, whatever device that they're using. So you can um, print paper invites, which is what I always did when I was in the classroom. And this would print one page per student. Each student would have a different QR code uh, that their, their parents would use to log in. And every single one of those codes would be different because each student has their own journal. And then you could also uh, email the information as well. All right, if I go back up to the top, uh, I have my activity section, and this is where I create differentiated activities, um, and I'll go more in depth than this in a second. Then to the right is my inbox. This is where I can contact and message um, parents or students. Then to the right of that is the skills. If you would like to identify the specific skill that um, the, the student used, uh, you can actually add that as well. This is a newer feature and I haven't been in the classroom for a few year, years, so I have not used it, but I know very, a lot of teachers find it very valuable. Finally, there is a blog, which I used to use. And what you can do is within your journal, if there is an item that a student is just really, really proud of, and they wanna share it with more than just their family, you can actually share it on the blog by clicking this icon that looks like the world. Um, and what's great about this blog is you can either leave it open to anybody who is able to um, log on or you can actually provide a password so only people with the link to your blog as well as the password would be able to access um, the activities that have been posted so it adds a lot more security all right, we're going to go ahead and go on to activities because this is really where uh, I differentiate uh, different activities that I require my students to do. So as you can see, this is one activity that is currently um, available to my students. So in this activity, students were ordering numbers from least to greatest from 0 to 50. Uh, right here, you can see all of the different icons as well as a specific direction. So it says, first, tap the add button. Tap your name to add this to your journal. Tap the label button, put the numbers in order. Tap the mic to record yourself reading the numbers. Tap the check mark to save your work. And not only does it have the great visuals of the icons. Kennedy Williams, excuse us, come sorry. to the front office. I am at school, so announcements do come on every now and then. All right, so not only are there the directions that students can read, but I've also added audio instructions for students as well. So they could either read it or they can listen to it. 
So if I click right here where it says responses, you can see there are zero responses, one waiting for approval, and two not responded. So if I go down, I can see exactly who I assigned this specific activity to, and I can see who has already completed it and it's waiting for approval, and who has not even started. So then if I exit out of there, it says one response waiting for teacher approval right here. So I can click on review and then approve all. So this was Mandy that had completed uh, her activity and I can see exactly what Mandy did. And if I wanted to, I could leave a comment um, to give her feedback on how well she did or areas that need to be improved. So that was an activity that was already created within Seesaw that a student had already started using. So to create a activity, I'm actually going to differentiate this the activity that I just showed you. So instead of ordering numbers from zero to 50, I'm going to increase the rigor and have them order numbers from 50 to 100. So to add an activity, you click on this large plus button. And then right here, you have the options to share activity, post a student journal, and to send an announcement. So I'm gonna click on share activity. From here, you can actually access any of the activity Seesaw has already created for you. And to do that, you would just scroll through, choose the one you want, and then click view, and then add. If I go back, I can see all of the activities that I've either created or that I've added to my bank of activities. And same thing, I could view and then I could add it and um, share it with students. But I'm going to show you how to create a new one. So you're going to click Create New, give it a title, order numbers from least to greatest 50 to 100. Here I'm going to type in my instructions for students. As you can see right here, there's a quick shortcut right here. And this is what actually creates those icons that you originally, originally saw in the activities. Within my presentation, I've actually shared a image of all of the different shortcuts that you can use. If I wanted to add voice instructions, I could. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to skip that part. Since I want students to drag numbers in order from 50 to 100, I actually need to add template to edit for students to edit. From here, it gives you the options that you have to add within Seesaw. You could add a photo, video, drawing, add a file, add a note, or add a link. For this activity, I'm adding a drawing. I'm going to click on label because I want to add labels of numbers from zero or from 50 to 100. I'm sorry, the original one was zero to 50. So I'm going to randomly click and add numbers that are 50 through 100. You could also use the label to include more instructions on what students were required to do. I'm not going to do this um, for this example since um, it's just a trial run. And I'm just showing you how you can access all of the different tools within Seesaw. So now I'm just going to draw a quick dot so that students know exactly where to start ordering numbers. So I clicked on draw. And then I'm going to click on this large circle, choose a color, just add a dot. So students will know that at this dot, they need to begin ordering numbers from least to greatest. From here, I'm going to click the check mark. And click the check mark again. 
All right, so this is the activity that I've created so far. I've included the activity name, the instructions, as well as the template that students will actually be able to use to um, complete the activity. Now, this is very important. So here it says share with all students in patent sample class. I don't necessarily want to do that because this activity might be at a higher level than where most of my students are. So instead, I'm going to click edit. I'm going to unclick everyone because I do not want to give this to everyone. And I'm going to choose the specific students that I want to assign this activity to. Let's say maybe they need more practice or I'm just trying to challenge them. All right, so now it says it's going to share with student four, eight, 10, and 12. Normally you'd use names. All right, I'm going to click preview. And then this previews it. So you can see all of those shortcuts that I added within the instructions actually turned out to be icons and then I'm going to click share. And from there, it has been shared with those specific students. All right, I'm gonna go back into the presentation to show you the shortcuts that you would use within your directions on your activity. So if you wanna create these icons for students to see, because many of our students are visual learners, you would just use these shortcuts right here um, and these shortcuts would create those icons. Now, as a student who is creating or um, not creating, but they are completing the activity, um, this is what it would look like. So they would use their QR code or they would use their email address to sign into their account. And from here, they would see their journal. And in my class, they can actually see all of the students as well. You can actually change some of the settings to where they can't see anybody else's, but I like my kids to be able to collaborate with one another. All right. After they are at their journal, they will click right here on activities. Once they click on activities, it will show them the specific activities that I have assigned them. It won't show all of the activities that I've created, only the ones that I've shared with them. And this is key with differentiation. Instead of assigning everything, I'm assigning specific activities for the needs of my specific kids. Going back, if a student wanted to complete the activity, they would just click add. Once they click add, it will show them the activity. So from here, if they wanted to replay the in audio instructions, they could. And so adding audio instructions can be really important, especially for our primary students. In order to complete this activity, what they'll do is they will actually click label and then they will tap on the number to move it to the space that they want. So if they were putting this in order from least to greatest, I would tap on zero and then they would drag it over by the circle and then continue on with the rest of the numbers. Once they are finished ordering the numbers, then they click on the check and that's what turns it into me. So from here, it shows up in their journal and then it shows waiting for teacher approval, which means that I need to approve it before anybody else is able to see it. And that also includes parents. It won't get sent to parents until I approve it, just to make sure it's appropriate. Now, this is a link that has amazing Seesaw Activity resources. So again, if you would like access to this presentation, please feel free to email me. But I wanna show you all of the amazing activities that Carrie Kinnert has started compiling. So not only are these activities that she's created, but she's also compiled activities um, that other teachers have been creating as well. And that's one thing I love about Seesaw is that there are so many teachers willing to collaborate. 
So within here, she has different um, topics that you can choose to specify the activity you're looking for. So whether it be language arts, social studies, or exit tickets, there are lots of options. And there are literally hundreds of different ideas on ways you can use activities to differentiate in your classroom. So definitely, if you're new to Seesaw, utilize that resource. So I'm just going to share a few of my favorites during our last 10 minutes. So in language arts to practice fluency, students can practice their high frequency word fluency or even nonsense word fluency by doing an activity called beat the clock. So you can differentiate by giving or assigning different lists of words to different students and then they can record themselves reading it. Similarly, you can have students record themselves reading a book on their independent level. So again, you're differentiating because you're not assigning the same book to everybody. You're making sure that it's an appropriate book for each student. You can have students retell a story. They could either draw um, to write the information or they could use the label maker to write what happened first, next, then, and finally, and they could use a book of their choice. They could also tell a very important part. There are different ways that students could share character traits for a certain book. They could draw the character and then add labels to describe the, the character. Or they could take a picture and then label it as well. Book snaps are really fun. Students just need to take a picture of a passage or a page in a book and then they can add facts if it's nonfiction or maybe if you're working on poetry they can identify examples of similes or metaphors. Students also love to use um, different emojis so um, as long as it's related to that specific part of the book I say go for it. Another way you can use emojis within language arts using the activities is Oftentimes, teachers have differentiated spelling tests. So with these different spelling words, students can actually use emojis to show their understanding of the meaning of their spelling or their vocabulary words. And not every student has to have the same exact word because every student's at a different level. So all you need to do to differentiate is just assign a different list of words. You can also create sorts for word work, for word sorts. And again, you can differentiate by having different students use different um, word sorts based on their needs. For science, you can have students classify objects and they you could um, have them basically sort emojis that you have already input into the activity or you could leave that blank and have them come up with um, different man-made items and different items found in nature um, by just using the label. Similarly, you can provide um, the word or the emoji for them to sort, or you can have them come up with the list completely on their own, which is a little bit higher order. This is a great example for our solar system. In social studies, you can have students label the earth. Again, if you want to make it a little more difficult, don't provide them the word bank. Instead, they have to do um, all of the labels on their own. And then you can also have students read about the branches of government and use this graphic organized to organize their thinking. In math, you can use a hundred chart and have them skip count by twos to, to, to 100. Um, you could also have them skip count by threes starting at 45. I know oftentimes that's a little bit harder for them because they get so used to just skipping by twos. Um, sometimes they don't make the connection that you could easily skip count by three or four or five um, just the same way. You could have students explain um, a skill that they're working on in math, like multiplication. They could use the pencil tool 
to write down a multiplication problem and then use the microphone to explain their work. And this is a great opportunity to showcase the different strategies that students are using to solve their math problems. Also, you could have a student take a picture of a word problem that they've created. You could also have them create the word problem right on the app Seesaw. This is an example of a graphing activity you could create, as well as patterns, and also show facts in a race. This is another great differentiating activity in which uh, you can change the pictures or the numbers to increase the rigor. Exit slips are becoming very, very popular. Um, these can be utilized in almost any subject area. So this is an end of week reflection that students could use. They could use this exit ticket as well, or you could just simplify it and tell them to draw and write. Um, and basically, they're just going to share what they've learned throughout the day or throughout the week. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, if you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them in the chat box on YouTube Live. If you would like this presentation, feel free to email me at spatton at garlandisd.net, and I will be happy to share everything that uh, I have put in this presentation. All right, I'll stick around for just a few more minutes to see if you have any questions or comments. Thank you for joining me.